There is a reason why Mark Huffman has such a brutal reputation among Saw fans. Taking his Jigsaw Killer lead in the original series as latter half, he boasts the highest body bag count of all characters, and pulled off many Jason Statham movie-esque action stunts as he hacked down his opposition. But why did he embark on this bloodstained career? Is he just pure evil, or do his motives, like his blades, cut much deeper? Hello horror fans, my name is Spookful, and let's get into the motive and life of Marcus Hoffmanus. Chapter 1, The Bloody Seeds of Cell. Marco Polo's motive and past is revealed to us in Saw 5. I wear masks with a smile for hours at a time. When it offers an explanation for the opening scene swinging dissection, we find out that the POS victim was Seth Baxter. The up-and-coming Gold Star detective Mark Huffman had lost all his family but his sister, and when she was taken from him in cold blood by her ex-boyfriend Seth, the fine string that had been holding Huffman's demented mind together snapped and unleashed a blinding darkness inside of him. He turned to alcohol and on one occasion heartlessly gunned down an unarmed victim. However, when his sister's murderer was released from prison on a Saul Goodman level technicality, his crosshair of rage finally had a meaningful target. So he decided that in order to not risk his career, he would disguise his act of revenge to look like the work of an up-and-coming serial killer known only by Jigsaw. So Hoffman donned his favourite black raincoat. And Let's just say that, due to the game being rigged, Seth was then forced to undergo involuntary mitosis. John soon after heard word that someone had imitated his work, and they didn't play by his rules, so Hoffman quickly found himself at the wrong end of a trap of his own. After being kidnapped by a Peaky Blinders cosplaying John, he wakes up face to face with the man he had been hunting for years. The two have some playful banter Fuck you. Fuck you. before John reveals Mark's trap, where he has to let John kill him. This really doesn't fit John's idea of rehabilitation, but sure, I guess. Hoffman is mentally pushed to his limits as he prepares for death, but as John pulls the trigger, the relieving sound of an empty gun barrel greets him instead of a large helping of bullets. They're bad for your teeth, I heard. However, even though the gun was empty, the mental torture did manage to kill off any of the good left in Hoffman, and marks the point where he well and truly grabbed his red lightsaber and embraced the dark side. Real quick, before you start chapter 2, maybe consider liking and subscribing, it means a lot. And I have a lot more Saw and Horror content coming soon. Anyway. Chapter 2, Death of John Kramer. John and Hoffman instantly began getting up to all sorts of goofy shenanigans, and began to take on several new apprentices. However, John forgot to invest in a HR department, and in doing so knocked over the first domino in the line that would lead to his death. So let's break the events of Saw 3, 4 and 5 down, shall we? So. Hoffman blackmailed Amanda so Amanda shot Lynn, so Jeff killed Amanda, so Jeff killed John, so John killed Lynn, then Strom killed Jeff, then Hoffman tried to kill Strom but failed, then Hoffman tried to kill Perez, then Hoffman tried to kill Strom again but this time crushed it, so Perez came back and investigated a tape, so Hoffman killed Perez and Erickson. So, basically we end up with one alive Hoffman and basically everyone else is dead. See, whilst Hoffman had served as John's apprentice for a while, he had a bigger ambitions for the Jigsaw brand, and more importantly, had a bigger bloodlust. So he struck out on his own to take on the world mental freight, and organised several of his own games. We can see in this time period how any trace of Hoffman's original motive of avenging his sister had completely disappeared, as he took out anyone and everyone regardless of whether they deserved it or not. But Hoffman made one fatal mistake, thinking that he could escape from John untested. A mistake that would come back and tear down everything he had spent years building. Chapter 3, Rest of the Living Gordon. After Jill, John's ex-wife, attacked and attempted to murder Hoffman, he swore to take revenge on her because, well, she tried to kill him. So he stormed a police station and went full on Arnold from Terminator 1 taking out the whole station and then some, where his off-site engineer turret he had left to guard the intel takes out even more of the city's dwindling police force. After a brief game of cat and mouse, he caught Jill and ended up killing her with John's most proud invention, the reverse bear trap. His cover now blown, he dragged his evil butt back to his hideout hangar and torched the place, presumably preparing to disappear and lie low for a while before starting his killings again, as he was sort of addicted to it at this point. However, John Kramer is nothing if not the ultimate puppet master, and having suspected Hoffman betraying him, he never revealed to him his greatest weapon, the original Doctor, Lawrence Gordon. Lawrence had been instructed to act without hesitation if anything should happen to Jill, so upon hearing about the police station massacre, him and some of the other ex-trap victims looking back to get at their trapper descended on Hoffman like vengeful bounty hunters and sedated him. Hoffman woke up in the very bathroom where the franchise began, chained to a metal pipe. 
Gordon made sure he couldn't escape the way he did by tossing away the hacksaw before giving us one last chilling game over and leaving Hoffman to his well-deserved fate dying in the pitch black room. At least his irredeemable soul would feel at home in the smothering darkness. So, Hoffman's story is one of a man who was pure evil. He had an understandable motive and rage at the very start of his assault, but nothing could justify the reprehensible actions he took from there on. But like a familiar purple serial killer, every drop of blood he shed would eventually come back and drown him, as the cold hands of karma caught up with him and dragged him down to hell. Pure evil burned in his heart, and he himself seemed to lose touch with the very reason he started his killings in the first place. So yeah. Thank you for watching this Mark Hoffman video. If you want some more content, my Ghostface Evilness ranking is on screen now. Or the algorithmic game masters of YouTube think you'd like this one. But thank you very much for watching, and until next time. Game over. No!